Senator Motion, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Vice Chair. Your chair today. Okay. Thank you, Madam Minister. My question has to do with recruitment, foreign recruitment, and welcoming communities. This was the program that was cited when we met with witnesses, and many people spoke of the success of that program. I'd like to know what's the future of that program. It was a pilot project that you had implemented in 14 communities, so I'm wondering what, what is the future of that program? I think that as we saw, we had really good results with the pilot project, and I truly hope that we will see an expansion of it, we saw very positive results. We continue to work closely with our key partners to make sure that we can go ahead and continue this essential work. And it's a huge challenge. We heard about uh, housing. We heard about the recognition of prior learning. We heard a lot about French language professors, but I'd like to know to what extent that program will be broadened or will it be cut back once again? You have raised issues that are important. I know that when we talk about the immigration rates that are high, um, affordable housing or, or housing is um, spoken of when we talk about uh, recognition of prior learning. I oftentimes have a taxi driver driving me to my hotel. They tell me that in their um, home country they were a doctor or a dentist. So the question of, um, of um, recognizing these professional titles is important. We're working with provinces and territories. Minister Fraser is trying to develop agreements with provinces and territories that will allow them to figure out how to address the issue. Recognition of prior learning is not um, usually a federal jurisdiction, but I think we all have a responsibility to work with specific organizations and associations to find a methodology to make sure that we can go ahead and that this work can be done. I'm not the Minister for Immigration, but the Minister made an announcement last November over $80,000 to help provinces and territories to implement programs, to develop programs to recognize prior learning. So we continue to work to try to deal with this issue. Many of my colleagues have repeated that if we really want to attract high quality professionals, specialized professionals, they should be, they will be able, we have to make sure uh, that they can work in their field. So this is um, important work that needs to be done by the provinces and territories. Finally, with regards to housing, I think Minister Fraser said that we want to make sure that we will choose immigrants to come to Canada with, in different categories, so carpenters and skilled trades. We do have a, a labor shortage in these skilled trades. We hope that we can facilitate their immigration to Canada. So these are all important issues. And I always say that I'd prefer to work um, when we talk about increasing the population than have a population loss. I think if we look at what's going on in, in, in our region with uh, hospital closures and things like that, well, we want the opposite of that. We want to grow our population and be able to deal with these issues. You have just under a minute. This year, my understanding is that Ontario is the only tar uh, province to achieve its Francophone immigration target. Francophone immigrants uh, Rather, I'd, I'm wondering what your goals are for the rest of the Canadian Francophonie. Well, I'm very happy that back in January, we were able to announce that we finally reached our 4.4% target for Francophone immigration outside Quebec. 
It took 15 years to reach that target, but we got it. Now we need to be even more aggressive, even more ambitious, and increase our targets. I think the data from the recent census have shown the loss of demographic weight among francophones. The federal government has work to do to ensure that we can deal with this declining demographic weight through C13. And really, I'm very happy that I could had the opportunity to work with Minister Fraser on this because it's an issue he cares deeply about. He will do anything he can to fix the issue with demographic weight, uh, to set up uh, an ambitious strategy with targets and indicators. Another example from our region, back in fall in Dieppe, we opened a center for innovation and francophone immigration because we really want to understand what the issues are, what are the challenges for people who come to the region, and how sh can we attract people. I really hope that we will be able not only to attract people to Canada, but also keep them in, uh, in rural areas, because it's not just an issue for big cities. We want to have people stay in regions throughout Canada, including in Quebec. So we want to attract people, but we want to retain them as well. As well. Everyone has a part to play. The federal government certainly has a part to play. Provincial governments and municipal governments have a part to play as well. And so do nonprofits. They've done a great job. They do great work attracting immigrants, and individuals have a, a part to play. It's not just... Uh, Immigrants who have to integrate themselves, we have to integrate immigrants. We need to ensure that they are well-paid and that they feel welcome. 